far from it. But a new economic model is needed to ensure clubs stay open for now and the future generations coming through. With us now to talk about some of the other stories making headlines around the world is the political correspondent for The Times, Lindsay McIntosh, and the actor and presenter Yunus Olomide. One of the big stories tonight is that President Obama has given a press conference in Washington talking about the situation in Iraq. And he's not ordered military intervention, but he has said he will send 300 military advisers into the country to work with the Iraqi army. Foreign policy reported it as saying Obama walks the line on Iraq, sending advisers, holding off on airstrikes for now. Lindsay, what's your reaction to how he's managing this. John Kerry's off there, the Secretary of State, this mm. weekend for diplomatic talks. Is this, is this a diplomatic, not a military issue? Well, the emphasis in the language is certainly on diplomacy as, a, as opposed to military. Um, he certainly seems to be saying that uh, the uh, politicians in Iraq really need to be reaching out uh, across the sectarian divide. Um, and what you have to remember about Obama as well is that when he launched his uh, 2008 presidential campaign, um, he stressed his opposition to the original war in Iraq in 2003. So now to be going in and, and, and making a much more mili military case for it um, would not sit well. Um, and let's face it, he's looking for a re regime change in Iraq. It may be by different means, but he does not want Nouri al-Maliki to stay as the Prime Minister there, and there probably cannot be a solution to this while Maliki is still in power. Yeah, certainly. I mean, if you look at the language he's using, again, he, he's very much not a supporter of, of the regime as it is, and he's looking, he's looking for a change, um, albeit um, through initially uh, diplomatic uh, efforts. You know, David Cameron was reminding us this week that this does have to do with Britain as well, that we shouldn't be complacent about this, that there is a terror threat whenever somebody like ISIS takes control of a country like Iraq. Is it something you're concerned about? I think that everyone's going to be concerned about something like this and I think it's really important that whatever we do um, as multinational powers as Britain that it, it's quite targeted and that we make sure that we take into account the thoughts and concerns of the government and the people in that country to ensure what we do doesn't escalate um, the problem. Lindsay, how impressed have you been, or otherwise, so far with Barack Obama's uh, foreign policy uh, stance? Um, I mean, personally, I think uh, the approach he has uh, taken um, has, has played out quite well. Um, he's obviously distinguished himself significantly for, from his uh, predecessor. But I was looking at a poll which showed that uh, actual support uh, in America for his pol foreign policy has plunged to a new low uh, this week. So it's clearly not playing out um, as well from over there as he would hope. OK, let's touch on domestic policy mm. uh, politics now, Lindsay. Ed Miliband today and the Labour Party saying that if they got into power, then they would cut benefits to 18 to 21 one-year-olds unless they got key training skills. Is this a unwelcome lurch to the right for Labour or is it actually a clever move to try and, and get some uh, chiming with the electorate? I don't think it's a lurch to the right at all, actually. If you, if you look at the policies, they're pretty progressive policies. What's interesting is the language that he's using. He's saying, you know, this is tough love. He's sort of appropriating the language somewhat to the, the right of centre and that's clearly a bid to get the um, the right of centre voters in, in England on board. What will be interesting is how it plays uh, up in Scotland when we're constantly told that there's uh, a different attitude to benefits up here, although that's not something I'm convinced that the polling uh, plays out. I mean some people seem to believe that it is a lurch to the right. Bez was tweeting saying it looks like someone's hacked Ed Miliband's Twitter account and is tweeting Tory rhetoric. I get that looked into sharpish Ed. Whether it's from the left or from the right, is it an attractive policy, Eunice, do you think? Is it, could it fix Ed Miliband's problems? I think there is, a, in a sense, an attractive policy. I think the most important thing is that we ensure that whatever types of services are offered, that they actually appeal to old people and to young people. So making sure that there's enough of a, a spread, I suppose, of uh, different types of traineeships, so vocational and trades and so on, it's really important to have that available. And if the right training is available, you think it's all right to refuse benefits to people who refuse training? I think it's a very, very tricky thing. Um, I think, on the one hand, it's so important to ensure that people do get the correct training that they need. Um, and I also think it's very important to address the reasons why people might not want to take on the, tra the training, because um, there might be underlying issues. We need to make sure that we facilitate that and take care of that. Interesting story, this next one, Eunice. You're a model. Childline today is saying that selfies that we see on the internet all the time can fuel body image worries. What's your view on that? You see selfies all the time on Facebook and other social media. 
Um, I think it's really important for parents to actually take an active role in um, checking and making sure what their children are doing. Um, I think it doesn't really make sense to kind of control and make sure that young people are safe in real life and then not kind of make sure that they're okay in the, in, in the, in the internet as well. Difficult, I suppose, when, Lindsay, you, you might have kids and they're inspired by pop stars like Rihanna, who it seems is always taking selfies. In fact, she's in fact hired her own selfie photographer, which kind of defeats the How purpose, does doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it must be difficult for parents, especially when their kids are obviously big fans of the likes of Rihanna. Yeah, I think so. And, and in of itself, really, what's the harm in taking a picture of yourself and, and sticking up on, it's up online? Um, but what I think is really worrying is we've seen the rise of websites like Ask FM and so on, where kids can put their picture up there and ask questions like, you know, do, do you think I'm attractive or, or so on? And the responses that you get from some of the trolls are, are really horrifying and have had really tragic consequences um, in a number of cases. The um, breast cancer awareness campaign where people were tweeting selfies mm. um, with no makeup on, the no makeup selfies, that at least addressed some of the glamorising of this. That's a picture of uh, Holly Willoughby um, tweeting a picture of herself without any makeup on. Did you do it, Eunice? Um, I do. I often post pictures like that and I think it's really important that in society as a whole that we place more importance on other things other than self-beauty and self-image. OK, and we have to leave it there. Thank you very much, guys. That is it from us for this week. You can contact us at BBC Scott 2014 on Twitter. I'll be back at the same time on Monday. Hope to see you then. Good night.